Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the Sonoff S31 Smart Outlet. You can get these for about $10 on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. They come in two different versions. They come in a Wi-Fi or a Zigbee version, and they use kind of this uh, crappy cloud software. However, we can reload them with a Tasmoda firmware, which allows us to use those locally on our network, and we don't have to mess with um, cloud accounts and things like that. Therefore, you can use these with things like Home Assistant and Octoprint. I'm currently using this for my Octoprint setup for my 3D printer, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. We're gonna to open this up, load on the Tasmoda firmware and configure it, and I'll show you how to get this working with Octoprint. The process is nearly identical for Home Assistant. You just need to then configure it for Home Assistant. So um, be sure to check out the chapters down below so you can kind of skip around and find the sections that you need. Um, but let's get started by opening this up so we can reprogram it. Before we get started opening this up, you will need a couple things. You will need some sort of USB to serial adapter, like right here. This specifically needs to be a three volt. A five volt will not work and it will damage the board inside. So this is just a um, SparkFun FTDI basic. Um, I have some links down below on Amazon where you can get something similar, but any USB to serial adapter should work. You're gonna need like four little leads. And then of course, you're going to need a soldering iron to solder all this together. So once you have all those things, let's go ahead and open this up to access the um, headers. Opening this up is pretty easy. That little um, gray panel on the side just kind of clicks off and it's pretty easy just to get under with a um, flat bladed screwdriver and just pop it off. Pops off pretty easy. Once you open up that, there are these little slides that kind of slide out of the way. Um, no resistance there. And then you're going to see three screws and you just undo those three screws. Um, this one did kind of um, take a little bit of force to kind of get it off. Just kind of be careful and wiggle it and you should get it open. No problem. So now that we have this opened up, you can see that there's this little row of pins or just pads. They actually don't go through, they are just pads. And what we need to do is we need to connect our FTDI or USB to serial onto these. And we're gonna do this in four different places. Um, VCC is where you're gonna connect your um, VCC on this or your 3.3 volts. Then we have RX, TX, and then there should be ground at the end. Ground is gonna go to ground. And for RX and TX, that is receive and transmit, you always flip those. So RX will go to TX on here, TX will go to RX on here. And um, that is how these things work because you're transmitting to the receive, you're receiving to the transmit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll get those soldered up. So you don't have to use a flux pen for this, but once you discover a flux pen, it just makes everything so much easier. It makes the solder flow a lot better. So I'm just using a flux pen on this just to make it easier to solder to these pads. Um, link down below, you should get a flux pen. Um, just putting a little bit of solder on the pad. I already have these leads pre-tinned from the previous one of these that it's done. But if you always pre-tin both sides of it, then you just need to kind of tap and um, that's all it is. It's kind of like doing contact adhesive. You're doing contact adhesive on one side, contact adhesive on the other, and then we just kind of tap them together with a little heat they stick so yeah i'm just doing um these little test leads that i cut in half and stripped back and um there you go now you have your four leads on there and we can plug these into your usb to serial programmer so don't connect your usb just yet but verify that you have ground to ground uh, 3.3 to 3.3 or VCC, and then TX to RX and RX to TX. Once again, make sure you have 3.3 and this isn't a five volt. For the next step, we're actually gonna be loading on the firmware. So we're gonna to go to the Tasmoda site. Um, I've got the link down below. You can do the web installer or the Tasmatizer. Um, let's try the web installer. I've tried both and both of them seem to work. So you gotta make sure that your drivers are installed and when you plug in the USB, you need to hold down that little button on the end. So hold down that button, plug it into USB, make sure your drivers are all installed. We're gonna go ahead and select the appropriate COM port. Um, you'll just have to figure out what COM port the USB to serial um, propagates as. And then we're gonna hit connect. And then we're going to install the English. I mean, obviously you can do a different language and we're gonna erase the device.
and now it's installing. Fun stuff. I'm going to hit next, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we just need to find it on the network. So now we need to get this connected onto our local network. So we're going to go ahead and unplug this and plug it back in. And now this will go into like an access point mode. And we need to grab our phone and we're going to go into the connect to Wi-Fi settings. So I'm probably going to hide some of this. So, you know, it's scanning for networks and you can see right there, Tasmodo. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. It's going to try and connect. There we go. Sign into network. Where's the sign in? And then from here, you just type in your network SSID and your password. I'm going to do that off screen. And now it says trying to connect to network. Focus. There we go. And so now we're successfully connected and there is our IP address. So if we go to that IP address on our computer, we can do the final configuration stuff. So this is probably a good time to go ahead and desolder those wires and put it back together. And at this point, you're probably going to want to log into your router and make sure that that IP address remains static. Um, this is something different for every single router, so I'm not going to go into that. But you're basically going to reserve that IP address so that when this reconnects, it's always going to connect to the exact same IP. And from here, if you listen closely, We can easily toggle it on and off, and then we can do some basic configuration. You don't really have to do anything else here, but this is how you can do um, a lot of different configuration for various different applications. Um, most of this you're not really going to mess too much with. Um, I didn't really need to do anything, but you can change your Wi-Fi settings in here. Um, right there and then you can also configure this for home assistant or whatever else you need and then this will have all the information that you're going to want so yeah that's pretty much all there is to it um, i'm going to go into the next section which is how to configure this so that you can turn on and off your printer with octoprint um, but if you want to go do something with home assistant uh, go check out youtube and there's some good tutorials out there so um, yeah let's go talk about octoprint so I'm not going to go into every single detail on how to set up Octoprint and how to set up the plugins because I don't want to uninstall and reinstall everything. But if we go into our settings here and then go into where's plugin manager right there, you can see I just searched for PSU. These are the two PSU plugins that you need. You need the PSU control and then the PSU control Tasmoda. This is a sub plugin for the main one. There's a couple variants for just look for Sean Bruce and those are the two that you're going to have. And if we go down here, uh, both of these are in the plugin thing, so you can just do the get more and search for them and install them directly through this interface. If we first look at the Tasmoda plugin, you can see that all we need to do is type in the IP address and set plug one. This actually doesn't really matter. Just type in the IP address that you found before. This is a different IP address because this is a different one from the other one that I was testing. And then if we look at the PSU control, um, there's not that many settings here. We just do switching method, plug-in, and then the PSU control Tasmo, the plug-in, which is the one we just went to. The settings just brings you right back to that other window. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you can set up the sensing, which I haven't really found does anything just yet. Uh, power on options, you can have it automatically turn on um, when the Octoprint loads, and then my favorite option, automatically turn the PSU off when idle. So if my printer is sitting idle for 30 minutes, I just have it automatically turn off after 30 minutes, which is pretty cool. Um, this is really nice because I never really turn off my printer. Um, I just let a print run, and then when it's done, take the print out, and you know, 30 minutes later, the whole thing just shuts down, which is pretty cool. So if we close this, we can see that we have this little um, lightning bolt up here. And if we click that, the printer turns on. Um, just have to trust me on that. It's turning on, it's doing its thing, and um, we can do whatever we want now. And if we click it again, it gives us this little warning. 
and we can turn it off. This is really fantastic. And I have this integrated in with my whole enclosure. I have Octo Dash loaded so that I can touch the screen to wake up the whole system. It turns it on, it connects, all that good stuff. It's really nice and convenient. So hopefully you got something out of this. Um, these little Sonoff S31 smart outlets are fantastic. They're $10. You can fit two of them into a standard duplex outlet. 10 bucks, it's pretty amazing, and it's really not that bad to load the firmware on there. So hopefully you got something out of this. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Check out the links below for all the stuff mentioned in this video, and I'll see you later.